Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Zenit webinar. Our topic for today will be how to increase user productivity with Alfred Desktop and Alfred Finder. For today's webinar, we will be covering three segments, then followed by a Q&A. First, I will introduce a few of the challenges related to user adoption in ECM, and there are quite a few, as well as some of the solutions. Then I will also let my colleagues describe the latest features and functionalities of our Alfred Finder and Desktop. Then our product officer, Tais, will give a demonstration on how these two pieces of software can work together by using some of our latest features, such as faster templates and file uploading. Then, of course, we will go into the Q&A session directly after that. Okay, so without further hesitation, I would like to introduce the panelists for our webinar today. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Klaus Shipley, and I am a business developer here at Zenit. I've been working with the company for a few years, and uh, it's always a pleasure to host uh, these uh, webinar events. Our next speaker is Kenneth Piat. Kenneth is the product owner of Alfred Desktop, and he has been a key member of the desktop team for the past three years, I believe. So it's fantastic to see that he's now the lead developer for our most popular piece of software. Our third speaker will be Lars Vierbergen. He has recently concluded some exciting work on the latest release of Finder. So I know he's looking forward to showcasing those features for us today. And our concluding speaker for today's webinar is Tace Lemons, the Chief Product Officer here at Zenit. This is a very important member of the team, as he knows, uh, since he guides and coordinates all the different technological components of our Alfred suite. This makes him the perfect candidate to take us through the technology that is used in Finder and Desktop. So let's begin. In a perfect world, ECM adoption rates would be close to 100%. Unfortunately, we all know that this is not the case and there has been plenty of research to support this argument. For instance, we have seen that poor integration is a major factor when it comes to ECM adoption. As a result, we have made OAuth integration available for Alfred Desktop, and we have kept the user interface standard so that users can seamlessly log in and start working in a familiar environment, something that they do every single day. The research has also shown that search is a key battleground for keeping users engaged. And this is why we have made a commitment that our tools can locate any document in your repository in three seconds or less. Additionally, we have enhanced features like search auto-completion so that usability is also a prominent feature whenever you're working with any of our products. We are also aware that some industries are a little bit reluctant to working in a truly digital manner it's going to be a few of those. This may be due to industry customs, low modernization, and other barriers. Nevertheless, we are extending our tools with developer APIs so that we can incorporate features like digital e-signatures. And by the way, if you're interested in our e-signature web webinar, that is also on our website. However, our discussion today will be focused on getting an improved return on investment by using Alfred Finder and Desktop. With Alfred Desktop and Finder, we wanted to ensure that our tools are easy to implement and use. And this is why during the demo, we will showcase a few of the features such as integrated authentication, cross-platform browser-based searching, and third-party search integration, and possibly a little bit more. But before we go to the demo, uh, what I would like to do is to provide a few quick tips on how your users can actually overcome day-to-day -day user adoption issues. For instance, many users are sometimes not happy with web interfaces or the web UI that comes out of the box, especially if it looks different than the standard Windows environment to which many of them are accustomed. This is, sometimes, this is something we see with some users who are a bit more resistant to change and in order to counter this effect, we think it's more useful to actually let your employees continue to work in the way that feels comfortable for them. Quite often, what they're used to is the standard Windows Explorer interface. 
this interface has been around for several decades, so it can be a little bit hard to switch. But the default interface of Alfred Desktop looks exactly like the Windows environment. So when users are given this choice, in many cases, it eliminates the roadblock towards um, adoption. Secondly, wherever possible, we believe that you should provide a search option for your users. This could be in a web interface or it could be in an embedded search box in a third party application. Luckily, Finder provides both of these options straight out of the box. Lastly, something else that we notice is that when you're using the standard interface, the search, the search experience is not optimized all, all the time for the end users. Often, there is no ability for things like personalization or metadata exploitation, but Alfred Finder solved these issues by offering a search first approach. So with functionalities built in, um, we think that Finder could provide the customers capable capabilities of um, having a search first experience, but also in being able to upload documents and edit metadata via the web interface. It could also provide them with search, uh, search ahead uh, typing in form of auto completion. And as I mentioned earlier, the extension application, the extensibility of Finder leads to applications such as digital signature and other developer tools that can be used to make the product a little bit more robust. Um, now, I think what we will do is we will transition into the second part of this webinar where we discuss uh, the latest and greatest features of Alfred Desktop and Alfred Finder. So I will now pass the presentation over to Kenneth, who will talk about Alfred Desktop. Hello, I'm Kenneth. Um... Let's talk about what's new in Offer Desktop 4.0. Um, in Offer Desktop 3.8, we had already support for Fresco 6.1, and now we have added our Fresco 6.2 support to it. Um, we've also added support for OAuth authentication. So this allows you to integrate Offer Desktop with um, authentication systems such as Azure AD and Google. And we also had some um, feedback from users about uh, lack of support uh, like, um, in, um, yeah, speed of the document templates and uh, we have um, made some improvements on that. Now I will hand it over to Lars who is going to talk about what has been offered finder. Thanks Kenneth. Hi, I'm Lars uh, and I'm the product owner of Finder. I will introduce you some uh, new features and enhancements that we uh, made to Alfred Finder 2.2, our latest release. Uh, first up, we have added two uh, completely new features in Finder, uploading documents and an extension API for developers. Uh, next to these features, we improved the search bar autocomplete and search filters. Let's first talk about the document upload feature. We learned from our users that they would like to use Finder not only for finding documents, but also to uh, upload them into Alfresco. This is why we added this functionality to enable you to upload your documents directly from within Finder. You can upload multiple documents at once uh, through the upload button that you can see in the first screenshot or by dragging and dropping your documents in place. Um, next to that, we have added a plugin API in Finder that uh, allows developers to integrate additional functionalities that are not part of the core Finder product. Um, with this plugin API, Excel developers or external developers can add uh, customer specific interface elements or uh, integrate with other systems of the customer. For example, uh, in this screenshot, in the second screenshot, uh, you can see that, that uh, a signing document signing plugin is uh, integrated that uh, allows you to sign documents from within Finder without having to navigate to an external application. 
uh, next to these two features that we added, we also worked on some improvements of existing functionality. Uh, we worked on the autocomplete functionality. When you search for something, we try to show you the rele most relevant option first. Uh, we made some improvements there uh, after uh, user feedback to uh, ensure that the most relevant options are shown first. Uh, we highlight a uh, part of a suggestion that matches your search. So you can uh, evaluate the provided suggestions more quickly and get to uh, the preferred uh, suggestion faster. Uh, second improvement that we made is the ability to narrow down the result list with multiple filters. So you will be able to select multiple different filters when you search. For example, you can filter for both Microsoft Word and PDF documents from your search results and exclude the rest. Um, that concludes the most important improvement that we made to Alfred Finder 2.2. I will now hand over the word to Thijs, who will give a demo of our desktop and Finder products working together. Thank you, Lars. Um, am I loud and clear? Yes, you are. Yes. And thank you. Uh, I'm Thais Lemons, Product Officer at Xirid. I'm uh, going to guide you through a demo of uh, both interfaces of a desktop on the one side for the Windows desktop user and uh, in a second phase, uh, Alfred Finder for the web user um, because it's a cross-platform uh, application that way. Could be working on a Mac, for example. Well, I'll start with opening Alfred Desktop. So in the opening screen, you can see I have three bookmarks. Uh, one, for, uh, one of them is prepared for this uh, webinar demo. Uh, I'll quickly open the configuration to show that we have here as authentication mechanism selected OAuth OpenID Connect, which is a, an implementation of OAuth. Uh, of course, the, old, uh, the older options are still there. Um, now to log into the Alfresco, I just double click. And I'll be guided to a screen from Google. So at Xenit we use Google and uh, we can use it as an OAuth provider. Uh, in many companies they use uh, Azure AD for example, so the screen could look slightly different, but it's the same kind of integration. I'll now log in and paste my password in. And Alfred Desktop will connect to our demo instance for this webinar. And on the left side, it loads the tree structure, uh, the folder structure from the Alfresco. Uh, and I'll try to make a document in the projects folder. We have a software engineering project. And let's say today we had a discussion on green energy. It was kind of technical. Um, I don't want to start this document from scratch. We have an excellent template for uh, technical uh, documents. So I'm going to create a document using a template. In this dialog, you can see there are uh, categories. So there is a tree of categories or you have templates without a category. So we can navigate through this tree or there's also a filter that might be easier if you know what you're looking for. And you can quickly select the template that you need. I'll give this one a title webinar discussion. The subject was green energy. And I am the author, so let's put my name in. 
I click on create. What happens now is a new document is generated and will be automatically checked out in Alfresco and the working copy will be opened in Microsoft Word. Well, this is not a Word uh, webinar, so I'll just do a quick edit and then close the document again. I'll change the document name to the customer name to Green Energy. Save the document. Close Word. And to now make sure it gets uploaded and checked in, I right click and update the main document. Now I should also be able to select the document and show it in the preview and it will load a preview from Alfresco. That's the document I just made. So now I want to share this document with, uh, let's say, an external consultant working on an Apple Mac. He will be working in Chrome with Alfred Finder. To make sure I'm not already logged in, I'll open a new incognito window. And I'll open the URL for Finder. Here, I'll put in my email address. So this is back on Google authentication. I'll paste my password in again. And this time, because it doesn't recognize my device, I get a message that I should look on my phone and because this is two factor and I should uh, and I should agree that this is a, a good sign in. So I click yes on my phone and we go further to Alfred Finder. So now Alfred Finder is loaded. We didn't search anything yet. So we see an empty screen with all the panels. Now I can start searching for, well, we made something about green energy. So I type green energy and we already get all kinds of suggestions on metadata fields that might contain green energy. For this, I will just search for all. So it also searches in the documents itself, in the content. I search and I can find easily my document on the webinar discussion that contains green energy. Um, and I can also look at the same preview. Now I'm looking at the metadata here and I see, oh, there is no description. Let's add a description because this was a discussion on solar panels. Let's save. And now the metadata is saved in Alfresco. On the other side, we see the filters. This is a quite simple search with one result. So if we look in the values, we see that there is only one option for creator and mind type and all the rest. Uh, so we don't have to fill, uh, narrow it down in this case. You can see here, there is another panel. So if you don't want to go to the, through the search, there's still the more traditional uh, browsing panel. And you have the same structure as we saw in Alfred desktop with the discussions. So now I want to up, uh, upload a new document to uh, Alfresco. That was one of the new features. There are two ways to do this at the moment. So either I click on the context menu of a folder and I can use this button or next to the search uh, search bar, there's also a upload button I can use. And now I can choose the document I want to upload. Let's take a document on Finder UI customization, upload it. 
I can navigate through the folder structure. Let's put it in the same discussions folder and select it. I want to edit the metadata. Let's simplify the name a little bit. Okay, that looks fine. And I'll save it. And now I can say, okay, let's upload it. Uh, and now, still, since this is still a search application, also opening a folder is actually a search. Search in folder. And I can go back to the results pane. And my new finder UI document is right there in the folder. And I can look at it in a preview. The panels also have a feature that you can enlarge them. So you can easily look at the document in a more appropriate way if you want to read it. And you can also minimize that again. So you have the full overview of Alfred Finder. Now the Alfred desktop user should be able to see the same documents. So let's switch to Alfred desktop again. Of course, Alfred desktop also has a search. Okay. And if I search for Finder UI, I can find this one, Finder UI document with yes, the same preview. And one of the features of Alfred Desktop is also I can easily navigate back to the file location in the uh, in the normal browser interface of Alfred Desktop. So that's where this demonstration is concluded. I'll hand it over to uh, Klaus again. I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Thais. And I will start sharing once again. Uh, so that was a uh, really robust um, demonstration, Thais. Uh, thank you so much for that. And also thank you, Lars and Kenneth, uh, for your earlier um, contributions. So um, I hope um, the improvements in the software and the demonstration that uh, Thais uh, just showed you was uh, quite instructive in terms of how you can actually use these uh, two pieces of software to work within your uh, business environment. Uh, before I go though, I just want to quickly recap uh, what we covered today. So what we have learned here is that uh, Alfred Desktop is, um, you know, it's compatible with uh, Alfresco 6.2 6 and it can now be configured to use OAuth authentication, which I think is a really, really major um, step forward and it has also improved a few things under the hood such as the faster templating which uh, this uh, previously demoed likewise uh, in finder i see some new things that i like such as the new upload feature and the auto completion for search as well as the filtering of the facets so all of this is good stuff however there was one thing we didn't uh, quite mention today and this i think is also quite a major step forward um, what we're going to be doing is that going forward, we're going to be bundling Alfred Finder with Alfred Desktop. So what this really means is that all of our Alfred Desktop uh, subscription customers now have access to Alfred Finder at absolutely no additional charges. And we have information about this uh, on our website where you can find all of the details. And if you need any more information, of course, on what this means for can always send an email to sales at senate.eu but we're here to answer all of your questions so uh, again just to recap going forward our alfred finder searching tool is now bundled with our alfred desktop um, productivity tool to give you uh, what we call the complete package uh, for searching productivity and user engagement so this concludes the third sector segment of our webinar today. What I would like to do now is to move uh, into the Q&A session and um, maybe I'll call on Daniela to see if there are any questions that uh, have been uh, posed at the moment. 
And also, if anyone wants to raise their hand to ask a question, feel free to do so now. I'm not sure if uh, Daniela is in the chat. No, I think Daniela had some uh, problems joining back in. Okay. Uh, so maybe what I can do is uh, I have a few questions uh, here that um, that um, I could uh, pose. Maybe the first one that goes out uh, to you, Tess, um in terms of the authentication, what's the difference between uh, what we have implemented and other single sign-on methods uh, out there in the market? Uh, well, single single sign-on just stands for uh, SSO just stands for single sign-on. I mean, and OAuth uh, and OpenID Connect uh, is one implementation of single sign-on but it's becoming more and more the standard uh, at least for uh, cloud applications like yeah you as you see you have the possibility to log in with your google and it's easy to to have an external provider that provides authentication to you um, it's easier than like for example uh, Canberos. there you have to be in a windows domain uh, which is uh, typically not always the case. And uh, like now in Corona times, maybe often a bit more difficult or it complicates working with external people. Um, so you don't always have a need a VPN for this. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, another question I have, and uh, maybe this one is, can be directed to Lars, in turn, know that we uh, know that our customer or desktop customers have uh, access uh, to Alfred Finder. How easy uh, would it be to implement on their Alfresco? Uh, well, that depends a bit on uh, the exact environment that it, uh, Alfresco is deployed in. But uh, in general, it's uh, it's just a static application that means it can be deployed uh, on any web server uh, without and you just need to configure the uh, Alfresco server and that's it and then you are ready to go um, for configuration of Finder it will automatically take over uh, all the supported configuration from uh, Alfred desktop without needing any additional uh, changes there Okay, and uh, maybe just sticking with you, Lars, a little bit, um, the upload feature that I just saw this uh, demonstrate to us looks uh, very interesting, but uh, is there anything else uh, coming down the pipeline in terms of, let's say, um, editing documents um, for in Alfred Finder? Well, we have uh, planned in our roadmap to be able to edit documents online and to upload of documents. Uh, editing online, we're looking to uh, integrate it with uh, Office 365 and uh, Google Docs. Um, and for uh, uploading new versions, well, yes, that's also a feature that will be added in a upcoming version of Finder. Okay, great. And I see another question in the chat room. And that question is, can we use this if we have uh, AD in our company? Is that the question for Finder? Uh, Active Directory. Is this a question about Finder or in general? Because Finder uses the authentication mechanism of Alfresco, uh, just as uh, Alfred Desktop uses the authentication mechanism of uh, Alfresco. Um, so it will, I it think it should a... not be a problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the question was uh, meant more generally in for all of our tools. Uh... If I can pop in. Uh, well, it's about, can we use this OAuth mechanism uh, that we showed in the demo uh, with Active Directory 
And well, actually, yes, and we have implemented it for some of our customers using Active Directory inside the walls. Um, that Active Directory can communicate to, for example, uh, Azure AD, which is a special kind of, it's a cloud Active Directory that can provide OAuth uh, authentication, it can be an identity provider. Okay, thank you for that answer, Tess. I'm still scanning the uh, chat room just to see if there are any questions. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like there are any more at the moment. So what I would like to do now is to thank uh, everyone uh, on the call for uh, their participation. And also for everyone listening, uh, thank you for attending another one of uh, Senate webinars. Um, again, this year has been, of course, um, different than the past. And what we intend to do is to put out more information about what we're doing, including more webinars, uh, more content on the internet, and just um, more improvements to our products and services. So please uh, follow us on all social media, stay tuned to our newsletter and other content that we put out because our hope is to get uh, Alfred um, up and running in every Alfresco implementation where we can help make your end users more productive and efficient. And with that, uh, I would like to say uh, goodbye to everyone and thank you for joining. Bye-bye.